That's the Orta. If you look over on the map, you can see Tolkwaro Michoacan. That's the state, uh, that's the city, or the town, and the state where they live in Mexico. So they're from way down there, central Mexico. A uh, beautiful village up in the mountains. And the village is famous for woodworkers. People there make carved furniture, uh, beautiful statues, and you know, religious art, uh, souvenirs, and masks. These guys are, these gentlemen here rather, are some of the best mask makers in the country. Their father, Juan Orta, was an award-winning, internationally known uh, mask maker. And they're actually carving the mask for your school. And it's carved out of one piece of wood. This is going to be a skull with a, a dove on its head, all carved from one piece of wood. Now, your teacher, Ms. Senorita Laughlin, has already been recording this morning. The first group saw him literally hacking away with a machete and a curved adds to get this shape. It started out this morning looking like this. So these guys are incredibly talented. They take turns cars and paint, and they take turns. Last yesterday, last night we were at a restaurant, uh, a margaritas, and, they, and Modesto was carving. Anybody here ever been to a margaritas restaurant? There's good. There's one in Framingham, one in Waltham, those are like Weymouth, and we decorate all of the restaurants with artwork that we get from Mexico. So we meet these uh, incredibly talented artists, and we bring them into the schools thanks to your teachers and I'm sure your PTAs, um, they don't speak any English. So you get to really use your Spanish today. You'll hear some words that are similar. Sometimes you'll hear just the root word of a verb and you can figure it out. That's how I learned Spanish. I went to Mexico years ago to study with their father and I had two years of high school Spanish. And I remembered like tener, querer, uh, hacer, I think, and estar and ser. And you start listening to how they use those. And next thing you go, oh yeah, that's what the teacher was talking about. And pretty soon it starts to make sense. So um, you'll be here and you'll get to have a chance to ask questions later on today. Lots of information. The town is, you can see there, Tokwaro, Michoacan is the state. Uh, the masks you see over here were all made by them. And one other brother, one will say, he's not here. There's five brothers in the family, no, no daughters, no sisters. And they've all learned to do this from watching their father and helping out. They said when they were around 10 or 12, they would you know, come home from school, do their homework, and help their father sand the mask, maybe paint. Uh, and then when they got a little bit older and braver, like in their teens, like 16, 17, that's when they started using the sharp tools. So it's a little warning or just advice. You know, don't, I know they make this look easy. Don't go home and like, try to carve. Unless you really know what you're doing, you can really uh, severely cut yourself. Um, these masks are just phenomenal. This is one piece of wood. The only thing they add on here are the horns and the ears. But that skeleton and the snakes are carved in the same piece of wood. They would have had to hack around, scoop all around those areas. They let the wood dry out thoroughly, then they sand it and paint it with automobile paint. And then they, they wear these in, in an actual fiesta. There's a dance that they do. It's called the pastorelas. Uh, it's a morality play. It te teaches the, it was taught to them years ago by the Spanish con uh, conquistadores, and it teaches them all about how to behave, you know, good behavior versus bad behavior. So this, these devils, they're called, anybody know the Spanish word for devil? Diablo. Yeah, the diablos are kind of like their special. They're not part of any cult, but they really like making devils, because as artists they can really experiment. So this one and this one are the kind that would be worn in a fiesta. And uh, just gonna give you an idea what it's like. It, it fits right on your face. <laughs> so, um, and you can see like the horns are carved separately. They sometimes will carve these fangs separately and fill little holes and put them in there. Quanto tiempo ha vivido para ser ese diablo rojo? Unos, unas tres semanas. Para todos. Tres, sí. tres semanas para todos. Sí. Tres semanas. What is that in English? Tres semanas. Yes. Three, weeks. Three, weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks to make that. That's a lot of long time.
This is also a mass that can be used in a fiesta that represents an ermitaño, it's like a wise holy man. Some of the masks have pestañas, pestañas are eyelashes, they make them from goat skin. You ever see the hide of an animal, you, you slice it real thin, the hairs will stick to the hide, and they glue it up on top of what they call cola loca. Cola loca in, in English is crazy glue. And let's see, then they have some, oh this is a mask that was actually used in the fiesta. Uh, um, but also made it for his son so he could be in the fiesta. These are some decorative pieces. They don't really use them in a the dance but collectors will buy these. This is an uh, owl with a skeleton made from the same piece of wood. This is an uh, owl with a snake that's carved separately. And then this is uh, what they call a sirena. They'll also make masks for other regions, other fiestas in Mexico. This is used by the Yaqui uh, culture that lives up in Sonora, in Mexico, right across the border from Arizona. And this has uh, horse hair as part of the decoration of the mask. Now, some of these can cost several hundred dollars. That's three hundred and eighty dollars. ¿Cuánto tiempo para hacer este diablo grande? ¿Cuántas semanas? ¿Cuarenta días? ¿Cuarenta días? How long is that? Forty. Días. Días. Forty days to make that. That's three hundred and eighty dollars. That's a lot of money. I mean, not that much. It'd be a lot more if it was in the gallery. So, but a collector would buy that and then put it on the wall. Um, so if you don't have that much money, you can buy these little smaller ones. These are like $39. This is how they make their living. They carve these masks. They sell them in galleries, uh, stores in the United States, Mexico, Europe, um, to collectors. And then if there's a feria, like a craft fair, they'll sell them and that's how they support their family. They each have four children in their family. Youngest is right around five. Uh, oldest is, you know, 17 years old. So they're in school, just like you. And they make some really cool little things here. They uh, will add animal parts. This is a mask that has the whiskers are made from the hair from a wild boar called Havelin. And so they will actually, you know, get the hair off, pull it off the hide. They drill little tiny holes and glue them in there. This one is a venado, a deer. They made little antlers on the wood. This looked at natural. Put some clear lacquer on it. I like the little sirenas. The sirena is a mermaid. This side is a, it's a face of a woman with the, the body of the fish. You turn it over and there's the fish. Yeah. Isn't that cool? So they're always coming up with ideas. These are much more affordable. Um, of course, they love making devils. You see a devil mask. Oh, They're getting ready for a big fiesta in Mexico. Anybody know what it's called? First and second of November? Uh, is it the Day of the Dead? That's right, Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead. So artists in Mexico, all throughout the country, start making figures of, skull, of skulls and skeletons. And here you see one of a skull with a tecolote or an owl. I wonder if that's one of the reasons they're making one for your, your school right now. This is a collaborative effort. This is a, a jaguar head that was carved on the wood by Avedo. And he collaborated with a, um, the Huichol tribe. The Huicholis are this group of Indians that live way up in the mountains. They're never uh, touched by the Aztecs or the Spaniards. They live in their own language. And this is actually beeswax that's been brushed on top of the wood. And all those little beads have been pushed in placed individually in these different geometric patterns. That took a month to make that. Isn't that amazing? Jaguar is a very important uh, feature, uh, animal in Mexico. It's often the, uh, the, when Cortez arrived with his soldiers, he had to meet the most fierce of the Aztec fighters for the Jaguar warriors. They would actually take a Jaguar's head and wear it as a mask, like the man's head would be through the, through the mouth of it. They also make little miniature decorative masks that they sell to people. We have some sale today as well. These are little tiny miniature masks. You can wear them as little as necklaces. These are only a dollar fifty. So if you feel inclined, afterwards. Uh, Michoacan is famous for lots of woodwork. Here's some uh, some little uh, keychains. Here's a little piggy bank keychain. Well, 
chance to come up and look. Here's a little sample and a little hand food. Doesn't work. There's your little peach. So you have those. Um, he likes, Avedo always likes making, he's the one carving today for your school. He likes making little monsters in his house. I was just down there. He has a Freddy Krueger mask. Really scary one. He left it down there. It's not really a traditional mask. He also had one of Chucky, the little puppet that comes alive and stabs people. And then he has a little miniature chupacabra. Ever hear of the chupacabra? Like their uh, version of the boogeyman. Here's one there. And then these little patos, these little ducks. These are made out of, the, the body is made from the, the plants that grow around the lake bed. And then they, they wrap it really tight and they sculpt it with their knives. And then they carve a little wooden head and then paint it. And those are called patos. Look at this. This is something that Modesto's been working on for hours now. He carved this in Mexico and then brought it up here. They painted it with, uh, this is being painted with acrylic paint. But look at the, look at the details on there. Look at all those little dots. He's finished this snake. Now he's starting to put the dots on this one. Now he's mixed the colors, contrasting colors. This would be warm. Isn't that cool? One piece of wood. This is wood that they use in Mexico. Got a couple masks we can pass around to give you an idea. This is one that was us. Do this one. This gives you a really good idea how you can see it's smoothed out very comfortably. And uh, you can see right through the eye holes and breathe through the, through the mouth there. So try that on. Take, take a look at it and then you can pass it on. That's made from basswood. That was made a few years ago. It's a way to put it And that's basswood. That's wood that we get up here in New England. This is copal. This is wood that they use in Mexico. Notice this one. It's a vida y muerte. So one side is alive and one side is dead. Pass, try that one on. Look at, make sure you check it out, how, you, how they've got all the proportions correct with the skull and so forth. Now listen carefully. Avedo's going to show you the tools that he uses. See if you can follow along. Uh, vocabulary word, herramienta, is Spanish for tool, and herrero is a blacksmith. That's the person who makes the tools. Lo primero que utilicé fue el machete. El machete me sirve para quitar la tecata del, de la pieza de, de trozo de madera y para ir formando poco a poco la máscara con el machete. Okay, the machete is the principal tool used in the very beginning to, to roughen the mask, they flatten the back of it, they remove the bark, and then get the basic rounded shape, so it looks like a face, a face is sort of like an oval shape. Luego utilicé el angaro. El angaro me sirvió para vaciar la parte de atrás de la máscara y para formar algo como las mejillas, los ojos, con, con el angaro. Angaro is Spanish for curved ads. That's used to scoop out from behind the mask. So it'll fit your face. Anybody know the Spanish word for face? Cara. And he talked about, uh, use that to define the ojos. What's an ojo? Anybody know ojo? Eyeballs. Eyes, yeah. Mejilla, cheeks. So you use that. He actually was scooping out the wood. He was it was hacking away almost like a hammer, but scooping out the wood uh, to reveal the different shapes. Remember, when you work with, with wood, you have to remove the parts that you don't want. So like the nose, parts like that stick out the most, you have to leave and scoop around it. Okay? El carro judo me está sirviendo para meterme en la parte de y el rayador de abajo. El carro judo. Canayudo is a fluted gouge. It's, an ex, it's a very uh, pronounced U shape in the gouge. He uses that to, to push the wood and scoop the wood out. Right now he's using that to scoop the wood out around the eye, the opening with the skull, where your eyes would go. El formón con el golpe es para meterme ya más, más para adentro. Empezar un poco la, donde va a entrar la barbilla de la cara y, 
y acomodar los ojos con el formón. The formón is a chisel and he's got a mallet there, homemade. The mallet is made from an old piece of uh, oak firewood. And that's used to scoop out underneath the mask so you can fit your chin in there. And also the scoop around the eyes. Y el más principal herramienta es el tranchete. Esta es una especie para que me sirve para limpiar y formar y ir formando las cosas más finas y hacer los dientes con el tranchete. Dientes. What are dientes? Sí. He uses that to, to smooth out the surface of the wood. It's got that nice broad blade, that hooked blade to it. So that'll smooth out broad surfaces and it's uh, useful to get the fine little details. And that's it. That's all they use is hand tools. They have an electric drill that they use, but that's mostly just to uh, drill holes on the side of the mask so it can put strings into it, hang it up, or wear. And pretty amazing. You yeah, see how he's going? He's chiseling right through the eyes now. So he's got a, a couple more hours and that'll be finished. That'll stay with your school. What I'd like to do next is show you how, uh, where they live in Mexico and you're going to see the, uh, what's involved. You would have to sit here all day and watch how they carve to see all the, the processes. And so we'll go to Hermanos Horta and then we'll give you an opportunity to ask some questions and come up. So it's a taller de mask, it's a Horta family mask workshop, Toporo, Michoacan. Toquaro is a woodworker's village on the edge of Lake Oxwell in the state of Michoacan in central Mexico. It's the home of the Horta family. The masks made by Juan and his five sons are some of the finest hand carved masks in all of Mexico. Each 
takes him up to a month to carve and paint one of his masks. Las ideas vienen de la mente de la necesidad de ser diferente, de tratar de elaborar una máscara conservando la tradición y, y pues más que nada la segunda petición o la ocupación para que se vaya a necesitar esta máscara. Each mask is a work of art in itself, and each brother is as skilled at painting as he is at carving. Modesto marks where they will guide a sharp gouge to define the nostrils on the nose. He smooths out the groove using a hook knife called a tranchette. La pintura que estoy utilizando es la que automotiva. Esta, esta pintura se debe de aplicar primero poniendo el sellador. Luego se aplica el color blanco para borrar las, las manchas del, del parche que puse. Uh, luego se utiliza el color carne. Luego se hace una combinación entre color carne más fuerte y carne natural para hacer las chapas. Entonces, pues ya al terminar, pues voy a pintar los ojos y voy a voy a pintar algo de carne a pelo. The upstairs porch provides a great workspace for each brother to work on his mask. Juan Jose examines the detail there is also. This is the thing that is not the color of one feature on the face of his, and a veil is ready to paint the hair and eyes on his mask. Their father, Juan Orto, has said on many occasions that once you paint the eyes on the mask, give it life. Nestor Village, that's about 7,000 feet above sea level on a lake bed, and those mountain peaks get up to like 10,000 feet. So uh, it's a pretty unique area. And the more remote uh, places like that in Mexico, the more these traditions are passed on and, and, and maintained. You can see it's really starting to become uh, looking like a skull now. He's, he's broken through the eyes.
Um, and it always works, you know, on the front a little bit, on the back a little bit. So um, everything is, is the same thickness all the way through. Uh, pretty soon you can start to see this is going to be uh, una paloma, see? Mm -hmm. This is going to be a dove on the top. There's, there's the wings, the head, he's going to put a little beak on there, the, uh, the uh, legs, and his, that's part of the nose. And little by little we'll be starting to, uh, it's just starting to define like, the jawbone right there. And then across there and get the teeth. Okay, I mean, he's very, very fast. And, and this carving you can probably see up front is very, very clean the way he carves. Now I know it's not every day that you have, you know, mask makers in your school and they really like it when there's questions. So you don't have to ask, I mean, you can practice your Spanish if you want or just ask in English. Um, so, yeah. get started, who wants to start out? How many times do they have to um, get new tools? Good question. Uh, las, las herramientas, ¿por cuánto tiempo duran? ¿Tiene que conseguir herramientas nuevas todo el tiempo? Uh, no, pues la, la herramienta dura, por decir, para durar 70 años, por decir, un, un tiempo. Eh, volvemos a mandar a hacer nada más cuando se pierda alguna herramienta. Yeah, the, these can last, you know, he said up to uh, about 60 años. How, how long is that? We know number 60. 60, sixty yeah, año. ¿Cuántos años tiene usted? No, año is years. So 60 years, he said they could last. The only time they get new tools is if they uh, if they lose one. Um, or if they, a veces ustedes tienen nuevas ideas para nueva herramienta, no una muy amantacho. forge it and then they come home and then they put a, a good edge on it. They'll use a grinding stone and different types of uh, other sharpening stones. And it keeps these things extremely, extremely sharp. Uh, yes, I'll get the tools. Yeah. How long does it take to pick one of those stones? How long does it take to pick one of those stones? How long does it take to pick one of those stones? How long does it take to pick just to carve it, little, again, little by little. And then they let it dry, you got to sand it, fill in any imperfections, and then paint it. So what they're doing today is a bit unusual. They know they're in a school for a certain amount of contact time with the students. They don't normally just sit and just carve, you know, hours after hours, you know, while kids come by. Normally they'll carve a little bit uh, in the morning, they'll take a little break, carve again, have their midday uh, uh, lunch or their main meal in Mexico, carve a little bit more, <coughs> another little break, and carve. So the, ustedes empiezan como a las nueve y terminan a las siete. Siete, este, pero al paso, yeah. poco a poco, con yeah. mucha calma porque requiere de mucho cuidado para que no se rompa. Yeah, you have to be very careful, you have to take your time, stay focused, so they start around seven, uh, nine in the morning and then work till around seven at night. Just working little by little with uh, the tools and painting. Uh, how big do you make this? ¿Qué, qué tal grande puede ser una máscara? Mm. Bueno, de, depende el trozo, o sea, la madera que tengamos, pero para allá lo propio es que quede en la cara para que se use para la danza, pero se puede hacer una máscara grande decorativa. 
no sería para uso. Yeah, normally they make them so they can fit your face, but they will make large ones uh, for, uh, for decorations. They uh, worked on one last night at Margarita's, it was about this big. And that will be nice on a wall as a decoration. Avedo said they made some about a five feet, four, oh, four feet, un metro y medio, no? And it's like a very simple one. Simple, basic, almost looks like a Polynesian style, something like, uh, maybe like this only much larger. So real simple, the nose, the eyes, and the mouth. And the big one, that would be like in a store. Again, it depends on the shape of uh, the, uh, the, the wood. This is an interesting piece we made. Based on a piece of wood, it had a branch coming out of it. So they incorporated the branch to make a, a long nose. Igual esto? Igual esto? Yeah, this is another one. Igual you see how they, they carve the ears separately, put them in there. And this was a, a, a wood with a piece of a, a branch coming out. They had it. This one has snakes coming out. It really just depends. Now I have been working with them, so I look for wood that's not going to have any any uh, knots or branches on it. So they like the wood. Work the wood when it's clean, uh, and I like to work when it's relatively green. So this was cut down only about three weeks ago. Basswood's not really good for anything. It's, it's too soft to burn for firewood. What type of mask is the most popular? ¿Cuál es la máscara más popular de sus de sus clientes? Bueno, sería la máscara con esqueleto. Es es máscara por decir reconocido que o que mi padre hizo para primera vez y ganó un premio en México. Yeah, the most popular ones that they're sought after are, are the devil masks. Their father made one years ago and it won grand prize in Mexico. It had this, you know, devil with its, you know, skeleton on it. We have one uh, that a, a modesto his father made. It's a devil mask with um, four snakes, uh, a, a duck, and a fish. They're all kind of intertwined, and then a vampire bat on the, on the top. And it's, it's pretty amazing. So they can, if they have, if the wood's got enough depth and they have enough time and patience, they can just take their time and whittle it all out. Mm -hmm. Have you ever hurt yourself with one of the tools? That's, that's a question that we hear. Ellos preguntan si han tenido heridos. Yeah. Sí. Si hemos cortado 